What's up guys, Cobbler G here. Welcome back to the channel. Before I get started today, I just want to do a massive shout out to Steve over at Bido's Leather Works. The guy recommended the channel and the amount of new subscribers we've had over the past couple of days has been unreal. So, big thumbs up to you Steve. Thank you so much. So welcome all new subscribers and welcome back all old subscribers. Today, we've got a look badminton. So these ones, they're pretty trashed. All the way in, the inside is all crumbling apart, the outside is in definite need of a resole, so I'm going to be doing a full restoration on these bad boys. So stay tuned to see how it turns out. Okay guys, let's break down the shoe. We're going to be removing the top left, old heel block, old sole, uh, and then seeing what's happening on the inside. So let's get to it. Hope everyone's staying safe out there in the current COVID situation. I'm just going to clip off these old nails because it will make the heel block a little bit easier to remove. Basically this heel block has been a, a leather combination with uh, just a fibre board. So there was a piece of leather on top and it's just a fibre board uh, heel block underneath. So it just crumbles away when you try to take them off most of the time. I'm just going to buff this last part on the machine just to get rid of all that crap that we've got there. So most of the stitching is already broken as he's worn them down. So just going to pop a knife in between that sole and the midsole and then cut all the rest of the stitches that are there and then pull off the sole.
That's the old sole off. Uh, the midsole, as you can see, is starting to crumble and crack away. I've had some good use out of these shoes. See the old cork here, so we're going to be refilling that with uh, some new fresh cork. Out all the old cork filler. We'll clean this area up quite nice. A metal shank in this one. Loke tend to use a variety of different uh, types of material for their shanks. They use metal, wood, and some nylon shanks. Metal ones are probably the best. Uh, the guy did complain that every time he has to go through the airport, he has to take his shoes off because of this piece uh, sets off the metal detectors. So in previous restorations, people have asked me to put in wooden ones for that reason. Um, not that it really makes a difference, really. But uh, a nice solid steel one will uh, be a lot better lasting for them. The wood ones do tend to crack quite easily. We've got a couple of nails left over, so I'm just going to hammer these through, pull them through from the inside. First off, we'll take out the leather heel pad that's in there. Put them in a new one of these in anyway. That's the old nails there. An inspection of the welt does seem pretty in decent condition, so I think we're not going to have to re welt this one. We're just going to be taking out all these old stitches. Yeah. Okay, we're going to remove all the old stitches. So basically, there's little loops of the other thread that sit around the thread that's attached to the welt. So we're just going to take all these loops off and then we can take the stitching from the welt off in one go. A little bit time consuming, but I'll show you one of the rings at the moment. So see these wee loops here? These are what go around. So I'm just going to make my way around the shoe, take off all these old ones, and then we'll be able to take the other stitch off in one go.
So I'll let that soak in for 2-3 minutes and then it should allow us to take off that gemming quite easy. I'm going to use a marker and make some marks of where the old footbed attaches to the shoe so that I know when we're putting on the new footbed we'll have the new footbed centred and in the place that we want it to be. We'll transfer these markings over to the new footbed as well. So the glue thinner's done its job, makes it really easy for this gemming to just come away now. Just pop a sharp knife underneath. Be careful not to cut the gemming. It comes away quite nice. That's pretty much all loosened from the upper now. So, the bed should just come out pretty easy. So there's the old footbed. As you can see, it's starting to crack. It's really in bad condition, so that's why we're replacing it. Oh. Yeah, so basically you can see here all the guy's footprints. So there's big toe impressions and all these other toes and then the ball of his foot. So when we're replacing in the new footbed, the guy is going to have to go through that period of breaking the shoes back in because no way we can transfer that print over to a new one. So we'll get that started. I'm going to just trace around this, use this as my template, and then we'll install the new footbed. So I've transferred the markings over onto the new, new footbed there. Now we're just going to use this as a template, cut around it. So make sure we flatten this down so we get the true size. Perfect. So we had cut that out and I'm going to attach that to the shoe, so we'll see you in a couple of minutes. So now we've got the shoe like this, it gives me a good chance to give a wee conditioning clean on the inside, all the lining on the inside. As you can see it's quite marked, quite heavily scuffed and scratched, so put a wee bit of conditioner in there just to soften it up, make it nice and supple. And then we'll go ahead and uh, run some glue just under the gemming here and on the new footbed and then we'll attach the new one on. We'll give the uppers a nice little condition as well. So 
that's our new foot bed in, all the old stitching out of the welt. Popping in the shank now, so I've just glued up this wee area. some fresh cork. Right, so just popping this in, filling up the void that we've got here between the footbed and where the new sole will attach. Now some people use different variety of materials um, as this filler here so we use cork and branch sort of the best way to use uh, the best material to use in my opinion uh, most of your shape of your foot over time makes it nice and comfortable now I have seen some cowboys putting in cardboard as a filler which is just not the right way to do it and it's a pain in the ass to try and remove from footbed once you do try and take it out. Some people use pieces of leather which is totally fine but yeah I like to use the cork. Uh, the shoe came with cork originally so I'll try and go back to how the manufacturer done it. This cork is slightly wet so probably about half an hour I'll leave it for, let it dry up nice once it's dry, there'll be a few bumps on, on it at the moment, so once it's dry we're just going to use the scouring band on the machine, use the rough band and we'll smooth it all nice and flat, ready for the new sole. Okay, I'll go and let that dry for about half an hour and then we'll have a wee coffee. Okay guys, that's the cork all nice and dry, so we're just going to be using the band here, rough it down, make it all flat. going to glue this up and glue the new sole up as well. So I put one coat of glue on on most of where the cork area is and then the welt here tends to soak up the first coat of glue so when it's dry I come back and just pop a second coat around the welt just to be double sure when we're attached to the sole that it's gonna sit quite nice be nice and strong new sole is in the infrared heat lamp so leave it in there for a couple of minutes and that will reactivate the glue and then we'll stick it on the shoe. New sole all glued up, all ready to go. Glue's reactivated.
Okay guys, we're going to trim off the excess leather that we've got around the side of the shoe using the ranger here. We've just got a blade, a wee handle that moves the blade around and it cuts around where you want it to. So. The new sole is just overhanging a little bit, so we're going to be using the rough band again, and we're just going to scour that flat flush with the welt. So now the sole is all attached, we're going to be running a channel all the way full 360 degrees around the shoe uh, in order for the stitching to lie inside. Time to stitch.
now we have the sole stitched on we're just going to hammer down all where the threads are close the gap and also just going to use the handle of the hammer just to run it along close the gap threads a little bit more Okay, time for we triumph toe plate. So we're just going to center this to where the toe is and then make a few markings with my knife just so I know where to cut out. Okay guys, now time to get this pitch of the shoe correct. So what we're going to be doing is just sanding away the front here, all the way towards the back at an angle, and then this uh, shoe should sit on perfectly. Alright, so go and get that done. using the heel press we're going to secure the heel even more heel is overhanging quite a bit so we're just going to be using the rough band again and smooth it flush with the rest of the sole I'm going to secure the heel block even further. I've got some threaded nails 
I've gone ahead and punched some holes into where these will sit. Makes it a lot easier for them just to fall inside. So we're just going to add some finishing touches to the edges using the brushes here. I've loaded them up with a neutral polish, so we're just going to go all around all the shoe. some brass nails for some decoration. Top the heel off nicely. Okay guys, that's us done with another project. Thank you so much for tuning in once again. So here's the end result. So don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, smash that like button all you want. See you in the next one.